what's up guys welcome back to my channel it is madam attorney and i am back with another video but before we get started on today's video i just want to say thank you so much to all the new subscribers that have subscribed to our channel and to everybody else that is watching the content but has not necessarily subscribed please hit the subscribe button somewhere here on the video and do join the family so let's get on with today's video okay guys so today we are talking about i've got my ideas book with me which helps me keep track of everything that i'm going to talk about in this video if you're starting out do not be afraid to keep an ideas book so that you can actually journal or write down what it is that you're going to be talking about in your video so that your work is a little bit structured okay so i'm gonna keep looking at this book so i can remind myself what it is that we're talking about today or the points that i've jotted done before shooting this video okay so we're doing five things to do or that you need to that you need to do before you actually start operating or opening up or doing or practicing as an attorney company before you start first things first you need to register your company with the law society okay you need to register your law firm with the law society you go to pretoria if you are in johan or in the Gauteng province you go to um the law society you uh they'll give you forms to fill out you'll pay um for the registration of the firm that is literally the first step you don't necessarily need to register your company with cipc as yet you can do it if you like but you can operate or register your firm with the law society although you're not registered with cipc so that's really the first step or the first thing that you could do register the firm okay uh with the law society and then if you like you can also register it with um CIPC you will get a, a CIPC registration certificate and you will also get a registration certificate from the law society those are very important that's very important because you are going to need a registration certificate when you're going to open up the second um, when you're going to open up a bank account for your business because clients don't want to pay into personal accounts when they're dealing with professional people okay now that brings us to our second point right Two, yeah, you need to um, apply for a Fidelity Fund Certificate. What is a Fidelity Fund Certificate? Is it a certificate that allows you to um, hold clients' monies in, 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 in your bank or trust accounts? Um, it, it allows you to do that. They give it to you. You apply for it in the first year uh, or just after you've finished um, registering your company or your law firm with the law society then you must apply for a fidelity fund certificate a fidelity fund certificate is important especially if you're going to have a trust account where you're going to hold other people's money uh, on their behalf monies that do not necessarily belong to you you hold them in a trust account so first things first is you register with the law society number two is you must apply for a fidelity fund certificate number three you must open up a business account and a trust account a business account is where you will direct clients to pay your fees if you've already done the work and now they pay you for services that you've rendered to them and the trust account is the amount that you will as the account that you will use when you are still are taking instructions from client um, the trust account then they'll put the deposit into the trust account and from the trust account you can then pay yourself whenever you billing the client so you must have two separate accounts as an attorney one a trust account which holds clients monies and the business account which is basically your business's fees or your money that you get paid once you have done the work so let's recap a bit one you register with the law society number two you apply for a fidelity fund certificate and after that you open up a business and a trust account now let's look at what number three is now that you've got all you've got all those things set up then you need to look for an office space either you do virtual um 
consultations or you do shared office space or you actually get an office space depending on what your budget is but you then kind of have you kind of need a consulting room if you're not going to be doing virtual consultations i know we're kind of moving with the times but the legal the legal field is not quite there yet people are quite skeptical doing things online i think especially here in south africa that is what i have learned with the people that i've worked with but again that is not um for some people are still quite skeptical dealing with attorneys virtually so you do need to have a consulting space or an office space where your clients can come and meet with you you talk to them whatever and then although everything else you would do it maybe online sending emails communicating with them and whatnot but for that first consultation clients kind of need you know to see a place where you're operating so that if anything goes wrong they'll go back to that place they'll trace it back and 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 whatnot okay so you need to look for shared office space or virtual office space or or uh, you know rent in another attorney's um in another attorney's office because attorneys are allowed to share offices so that would be the fourth thing that you need to make sure that you tick check when you are thinking of opening up your own firm now let's look at number it was fidelity fund okay you apply with the law society you apply for a fidelity fund you open up uh, a bank account and then you look for shared office space and then after that now it's you've got all these things you have already prepared would see okay you've got your office space you've got your um trust accounts you've got your registration certificates now you are a legit attorney ready to practice now you need to get clients where do you go for clients okay we were disturbed there for a second but what i was talking about is that now that you've got everything registered and you're ready to start operating you need clients obviously your business is not going to be a business if you don't have people that you are servicing so now comes the most important part of the business you need to market yourself you need to market yourself luckily nowadays we are able to market ourselves as attorneys on facebook you're able you can use social media to get your name known you can use facebook to get yourself out there you can use emails instagram twitter you know there's so many platforms that are now open for attorneys to market themselves obviously if you've got the budget for it you can go to radios you can go to tv stations you can use billboards municipal billboards and all of those but i think marketing is the most important if the most important aspect of any business you need to market yourself you need to be known you cannot be modest about being an attorney or running a business people need to know what it is that you do people need to know where they can find you people need to know how you can help them and how you charge you need to be very transparent you need to be open you need to honestly get your name out there you need to get known so the fifth thing when operating or when you want to start your own business is you need to market yourself i cannot emphasize this enough if people don't know about you you are going to be a hungry attorney okay so let's say now you don't necessarily have the funds to market yourself you don't know people you do not have connections where can you go where you might get work well you can approach this is called touting it's not allowed okay so you can speak to family members you can speak you can go to local clinics uh, consult on local clinics where there's people who don't necessarily qualify or who are people who would people who don't necessarily qualify for um, all the free legal services that you get in South Africa either from legal aid pro bono or uh, legal clinics and universities there are people who are who just don't meet the criteria to be assisted in those places so if you maybe avail yourself yourself there to provide advice then you could find people that you would charge but just not the same charge you would get um in a private firm you know and that would kind of keep you going you could do bails you could do um you know mediations you could do um consulting providing legal advice to people at a charge or at a fee you do not just give out legal advice because when you're an attorney you must understand that as an attorney you are selling time you are selling knowledge so if a person comes to you uh as a friend 
if they are a friend and they want to support you then they should they should pay you for the advice that you give them they should recommend you to other people instead of wanting to exploit you so don't let friends and family exploit you for your services because even if you are a doctor in a family ne? they still need to pay you so same way as attorneys you guys you need to pay attorneys whether they're friends whether they're starting out you are helping facilitate their growth okay so that was my two cents for today thank you so much to everybody that watches these videos thank you so much um thank you so much to everybody that subscribes i really do appreciate it and i will see you guys in another video and for now adios bye